the David by Michelangelo is one of the most famous statues in the world. Michelangelo started sculpting this enormous figure when he was 26 years old and completed it almost three years later. It represents the figure of David, who is described in the Bible as a handsome shepherd boy who will defeat the giant Goliath. But Michelangelo turned this boy into an enormous standing mill nude that keeps on attracting visitors from all over the world every day. And in this video, we will learn more about this statue through 10 fun facts. Whereas many famous artworks have gone through periods during which they were considered just average or not that great, the David by Michelangelo has been popular from the beginning. As we will hear later on, when Michelangelo finished that statue, it was immediately considered a true masterpiece. And half a century later, the famous art historian Giorgio Vasari described it as follows. For in it may be seen the most beautiful contours of legs, with attachments of limbs and slender outlines of flanks that are divine. Nor has there ever been seen a pose so easy, or any grace to equal that in this work, or feet, hands and head so well in accord one member with another, in harmony, design and excellence of artistry. Most artists depicting David chose to show him victorious after he defeated Goliath. But for this statue, it is not immediately clear if this is the moment before or after the defeat. We can look at his body language, which can be described as a combination of confident, calm and concentrated. It doesn't look like someone who has just defeated a giant like Goliath. Instead, this looks like the moment before he will make his move and that will also become clearer in the next fun fact. While Michelangelo was busy sculpting the perfect human body, he also had to make sure that this was not just a large standing male nude but that it represented the story of David. So, to not take away much from the beauty of David's body, he incorporated a subtle sling, which David would use to defeat Goliath. He holds the beginning of the sling in his left hand, and it runs over his back to his right hand, in which he holds a rock. And he will soon use this sling to swing that rock in between the eyes of Goliath. Michelangelo sculpted David in a classical contrapposto position, with one leg forward, the other one straight holding its full weight and the hips and shoulders pointing in opposite directions. You can see how he flexes the muscles in his right upper leg, the veins on the back of his hands and his concentrated gaze. It all seems so carefully balanced at first, but this is not entirely true. In fact, as we will hear later, the statue was originally intended for the top of a cathedral about 80 meters high up in the air. And for that reason, Michelangelo distorted the dimensions of David. The size of the head, for example, is out of proportion, and the right hand is bigger than it would be in reality. Not because Michelangelo made some mistake, of course, but rather because he understood that when looked at from below, it would be perceived differently than when standing at ground level. When standing in front of the David, you will notice that it is an enormous statue. But how tall exactly? It is 5 meters and 16 centimeters high, that is almost 17 feet, or the height of an adult giraffe. That's about two times the size of the tallest known person will ever live in this world. It's kind of ironic that David is sculpted at this enormous size, given that he is not described exactly in the Bible as such, especially given the fact that he is about to fight the giant Philistine Goliath. And with this size also comes a pretty hefty weight, which is 5,700 kilos or about 12,500 pounds, about the weight of three cars. 
Despite its enormous size, this statue was created from a single block of marble. Not one that Michelangelo had carefully selected though. It was actually a block that had been laying around unused in Florence for 25 years. There were two other artists that had tried to work on this block, unsuccessfully though, so the block was not only a leftover, but also an imperfect one, showing the failed attempts of two previous sculptors. And then the block had particular dimensions within Michelangelo had to work, which may explain why David looks pretty slender and why he keeps his arms relatively close to his body. The commission for the statue came from the large cathedral of Florence, who wanted to have a series of large statues that were to be displayed 80 meters above ground level. So the statue had to be big and it had to have some religious content. So when Michelangelo finished his statue, you can imagine that the people from this church were not exactly expecting a full nude statue. But when they saw the statue, they were not disappointed. Instead, they thought Michelangelo's work was too good to be put on top of the cathedral. So they decided that it deserved a more prominent place. A committee of 30 experts was formed, including Leonardo da Vinci and Sandro Botticelli, and it was ultimately decided that the statue was to be placed on the most important square in the city, the Piazza della Signoria. Another reason that the statue did not end up on top of the Florence Cathedral is that the commissioners realized that it would be a little bit too heavy to lift the statue all the way to the top. In fact, it already proved a big challenge to move the statue from the workshop of Michelangelo to the Piazza della Signoria, a distance of 800 meters or half a mile. It would take 40 men and 4 days to safely transport the statue over the Florentine cobblestones to its location for the next few centuries. There is more than one version of this statue. Actually, there are a lot of them, but only one was made by Michelangelo, and that is the one you can find in the Galleria dell'Accademia Museum in Florence, which built the hall in which the statue is placed specifically for the David. The statue has been in the museum since 1873, and before that it stood at the Piazza della Signoria for almost four centuries. Nowadays, we can find a large replica there. A smaller replica can be found on the Piazzale Michelangelo in Florence, and other replicas are all over the world. There are about 30 replicas in total that have the same size as the original. The last fun fact for this video is related to the symbolic role that David has played in history. The story of David and Goliath is one of the underdog beating the favorite, always an appealing story when you support a sports team that is not that good. But of course, the story also related to war and despite their leading role in arts and science, the Florentine people never felt like the favorite when it came to military conflicts because the armies of their neighbors were often bigger and stronger. But David stands for inventiveness courage and wisdom, all values that resonated with the Florentines and with many other people, city, sports teams, organizations and countries around the world. I hope you enjoyed this discussion of one of the most famous statues in the world. I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. And while we are on the subject of statues, I'm curious to hear about some of your favorite statues you have seen in person. Finally, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.